Welcome back guys. I said previously that I was going to show you a bit better view of the Mystery Project building at the stage it is now. As you know, when I went back to Australia, the walls were going up. And I showed you snippets of video where the windows and doors went in. Um, the roof was already on, you saw that in the earlier videos. We also saw more concrete going in. We'll just flip around here now. So here's the building. It's quite a large structure. It has especially high walls. So we've got uh, quite a high roof and ceiling inside. The idea of that was to make it as airy as possible and feel as big as possible. That also helps with the, um, the heat. Uh, a nice high ceiling is always been something that was where I come from in Australia the older houses were always like that and that was the intention a high ceiling to keep the place cooler anyway here we are now we have paint on all the walls what you didn't see was very much of the kitchen well the main building finishes pretty much at this doorway now from there the back of the building was here at this post we then built an external kitchen half height wall mesh for security sliding door this side for going in and we'll just head in there now Open the door. Now, the inside walls have all been painted. Um, we've opted for white there. That was Stanley's choice. The pillars did get orange. I'll go with uh, her idea on that. The floor has been tiled. All this large ceramic tiles, uh, which is quite nice. So you can see the size of the place, just, it's quite big. As we're talking about high roof, there's the high roof. There's no suspended ceiling in here. I'm not really sure what way we're going to go with that. Whether we put one in, whether we Put one in that is peaked and closest to the roof sheeting. Don't know. Lots of ideas thrown around there. Um, we have the electrical wiring. We have power points. All of that's at the top. You can see the yellow PVC. That's the colour for electrical conduit. We have all the junction boxes. We have a light switch panel there, a master, and a more power points. We're expecting to have multiple fans. Whether I hardwired them or plug them in, I'm not sure. We've got what they call the Shima box. That's all circuit breakers. So that thing for safety and for central control. Um, more of that yellow conduit. We have fluorescent lamps, lights, tubes. Another power outlet and switch panel here. Front doors in. Dogs already managed to destroy part of the screen on it, so I have to replace that. The fly screen. Bit of cleaning up to do and edges. So uh, where paint meets where paint meets door frames and window frames. All of that to be done. We'll get there. Um, what else is there? 
this panelling up the top, the brown panelling, which goes all the way up and it's pretty much all the way above the wall height, pouring the peak up in the middle there, where the peak pattern is. There should be two rings put in. Now, they haven't gone in yet. Like the air vents are slightly air vents for the common things to put in. So, with the heat rising up there to the peak, um, you normally have that as a vehicle layer to let that escape. And also for the ingress of cool air, whichever way it balances on any particular day. The same required at the back. We should uh, yeah, the following obviously the peak is front to back. With this is concerned, that is an annex and that has its own roof, which is um, not peaked. It's slightly um, angled down to the outside, so that drains the water away. Um, door into the kitchen. There's a window there too. The required Buddhist um, FG and, and stuff there. Another PowerPoint. Uh, quite a big area, roomy area. We had some furniture from the home in town that we bought here. So that's been put into use a few times when town needs had friends over. There's a motorcycle over there at the moment which belongs to one of her nephews. He's here for safekeeping while he's working in Bangkok. And we go through the kitchen door. That's similarly tiled. The wall is half height here with mesh to keep it airy. Um, let the cooking smells go out, let the breeze come in, keep the place fresh. Still some dressing up to be done. Um, we've got the steel bars at the top of the doorway there, but um, I'm guessing that could have some sort of dressing to make it a little bit prettier. This area opens out. And you can look out onto the dam out there. We've got bananas growing along this side. We have a mango tree there. More bananas. The dam's quite full. Now, still fitting the kitchen out, but it's got a sink and it's got the built-in type work um, surfaces. So that's all in there. Um, we put a, a fixed gas range in there, so that's all new. The gas bottle lives down there. And we have cabinets, that side and that side. Obviously the space under there is bigger than the doors. A um, couple more cabinets. Another workspace, the blender and the the hot water kettle, various stuff here. So sure, there's other fixtures that are required in here, but they'll come. We've got three fridges in the house in Long Tower. One is a glass door one, like you would have in a shop for dispensing drink, but that needs to be repaired. The uh, main fan in that needs to be replaced, so I'll have to get that done. And we also have a fridge freezer there, which doesn't get used a lot, so it would be put to better use in here. We've got plenty of room for that here. Um, that leaves the house there with a half height uh, fridge, which is ample for milk and eggs and a few frozen bits and pieces and cold stuff that's required. So um, two fridges to come here. So it's coming along quite well. Um, there are things that need to be done, most definitely. We need to get our picture in our mind 
of what we are actually going to initially use the place for and work towards that. And so it's probably not ideal for high volume, but um, I'm thinking that maybe it should be a sort of a hybrid business. Um, it might be a base for Townley's flower business. And if we move that more into wholesale, we could put coolers in here and uh, keep all of the we could put coolers in here and keep all of the flower stuff here. We could sell drinks, we could sell beer and things like that. We could sell coffee, we could have a restaurant, it could be a function centre. But we need add-ons, we need to pretty it up. At the moment we have one of these settings here, but um, this concrete open, we could probably get another one, two, maybe fit three there. We could fit a few across the front here. Plenty of room. Maybe, I'm not sure, maybe a half height wall between these columns might be nice. Dress it up, pretty it up, put some uh, more pot plants and flowers. Tossing up what to do with the eaves, whether to put some eave boards in that are vented to allow air to go in and up to the peak of the roof. Keep things cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we do need full length gutters. A lot of water catchment comes off this room and it does like to uh, dig channels in the ground here. Now this area is quite ideal in that it's quite possible that we could carry this concrete apron out to um, say the back wall, the line of the back wall of the toilet and shower block there, which would make a larger area. I put that in concrete I could um, put some posts up and a half height wall, put some shake cloth on it. What kind of roof? Not sure. Maybe just shake cloth is fine. Something that will break the heat of the sun and make a cool area. But that's, that's fine. This area has all been uh, ploughed a week ago. Um, more flowers will be going in there, but um, I will try and get Sally not to bring them all the way up to the house. Sorry, up to the building, the restaurant, the project. I'll try and finish off about where that back wall of the shower is in case I suddenly decide to, to move ahead and do something there. All of that depends on funds, so I have to look at um, what I can afford to do. As I say, we're not, <laughs> we're not flesh with money. Um, I didn't retire with the amount of money in the bank that I would like to. A lot of things happened. I was a carer for my late mother who lived to a ripe old age of 99 and so I wasn't working as solidly and full time as I'd hoped to be. And then sadly a year later I lost my brother um, to cancer. So there's been disruptions but they say um, life is what happens while you're busy doing other things. Well that's the way it is. This is where I want to be, and uh, we'll make care of it. Positive attitude, it's where we want to be, what we want to do. So, uh, moving on from there, we've got more to do. We've got more to do, we'll keep the flower business going. I think the majority of the wet season is gone now. We'll get a few more showers, I'm sure, but um, we're moving into the cool period, so a lot of the uh, the water that we have now that will gradually um, gradually disappear. Quite deep down this corner, this is a bit of a low point. The rubber tree plantation is still a lot of water in there. Today, well, actually, early this morning, Talony has got the rice fields organised with pipes running between separate fields because they've got the big walkways on top um, that separate each each field or paddy depending on what the terminology is for that um, and so she manages the flow of water so she keeps enough water in each paddy and then opens up a pipe to siphon any excess off or to to feed one lower down the, the chain or um, as the incline of the property. Um, 
And that all ends up into the Klongs along the road. Klong is a channel, a metre deep, a metre and a half wide about. Originally a metre, but they grew. So the water from the paddies goes into the Klong, and then the Klong drains down into the big dam. And the big dam is up the other side of the house has got a large PVC pipe running underneath the concrete in front of us, or the front apron of the house, uh, into this second dam. And that PVC pipe's underwater at the moment, but it's about where that dead branch is. And so the level of the paddy fields drains into the main dam, and as the main dam is full and this area here becomes low on water then she'll transfer the water into here and when I was here earlier in this year we put in another PVC pipe which the end of is down quite deep in the water there which goes all the way down underneath this concrete and along just inside the fence, inside the line of the banana plants that are there to a concrete box in the ground. That concrete box is the end of obviously the PVC but it is also encompasses uh, about a two foot water pipe underneath the road that goes across that other gentleman's farm down towards the corner just this side of where that just the other side of where that last power pole you see is so that's how we manage our water it can't keep it forever it's all going to go somewhere and it does have to go down line you can't block it it's a bit like um management of creeks and rivers etc running through properties uh, it doesn't belong to any one landowner. It belongs to everybody who's actually uh, on that estuary, waterway, creek, whatever it happens to be. So in most countries there's laws governing that, that you're not allowed to, to dam it to any significance, you're not allowed to restrict it or stop the flood. Pretty much the same works here in rural Thailand. Our farm is on the higher side of the road, obviously on the right here. And the next property beside us is probably um, a metre lower, maybe more. I don't know how you'd measure it, but uh, whatever. So the water from our property will drain down to his. When this last recap of bitumen was done, the guy owning this farm down towards the corner, dug a trench across and put a PVC pipe in. And we opened and closed that as the need be to allow water from that end of the property to go to that end of his farm. So there's a lot of, you have to be good natured about it. You have to protect your, uh, your interaction with your neighbours. Uh, and in the community, you've got to be community spirited. So we do all that. And that's where we're about at today. Today's a cooler day. A Sunday at the moment, but we've had dry out most of the day. Um, I did get some more cutting down earlier this morning. Um, as you understand, every time I come back, running the farm's at least a two-people job. And when Talon is here by herself, there's a lot that she doesn't have time to do. She does have to pay people to do cutting in areas that I would just say um, that she needs to press into use for growing flowers or access ways or, or whatever but you can't keep doing that all the time so when I come back there is usually quite a backlog of cutting um, that has to be done so I've been doing a lot of that you're getting me um, a few more days and we'll have the bulk of the important stuff done yeah then we can start worrying about prettying it up and uh, 
doing this stuff that's not so critical. But uh, we'll get there. Lots of other jobs. Great to be back. <laughs> I wish you were here. Does that sound like a come on? <laughs> well, well. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll keep in touch and I'll bring you more of what we're doing and some more different stuff on the lifestyle that we have living here in Thailand. Um, I hope you enjoy. Please give us a, a like down below and love to hear your comments. Give me some questions. Lots of stuff that I think I should tell you, but there's probably a lot of stuff that I, I miss or that interests you that um, I haven't clicked that you'd like me to be a little bit more uh, detailed in you know, bringing to you. So love to hear your questions. Happy to answer them. And we'll catch you up next time. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.